Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're really, really well. So today I'm gonna be showing you my 2018, 2017 favorites. And this is gonna be all about my beauty favorites, so makeup, skincare, and hair care. I really wanted to include fashion favorites, food favorites, like lifestyle favorites, but I think if you guys want that, I can do that in a separate video. But yeah, these are the products that I've obviously loved the most. You'll probably be familiar with most of them, but yeah, I thought I'd share them with you today. This is gonna be a very long video, so sit back, relax, eat this with your dinner, whilst you're tidying your room. Um, yeah, I'm gonna start with hair care because this is what I have the least of, I guess. And my first favorite is my wet brush. Now, this has actually got a bit of hair in it because I've just used it. But I really like this because if you've tried a tangle teaser, you know, it doesn't break your hair as much and it's quite, um, good, well, good at detangling your hair. The wet brush is, works better for me because Firstly, the bristles are longer. Sometimes when I use a tangle teaser and I brush my hair, I, I feel like it's only brushing the top layer of my hair. You know, I don't really want to have to se section my hair to brush it. But with this, because the bristles are longer, I can just, you know, comb through it all. And the thing, what makes a wet brush a wet brush is that the bristles are really like soft and flexible compared to normal brushes. Like when you brush through your wet hair or dry hair, it doesn't snag as much and it's just easier and better for your hair. I got this at TK Maxx and yeah, I really, really love it. I really do love it. So my next and last hair care product is these shampoos. I always get a lot of questions about my hair care and what I do. I think I'm gonna do a separate video on it to answer all your questions. But these are the shampoos I used. I've mentioned it in a previous favorites video before, but they are the Wella Brilliance Color Protect, Color Enhance Shampoo and Conditioner. And they're really good at not stripping my hair. They don't have like silicones and stuff, which make your hair feel healthy but it's not actually doing it doing anything for your hair and i find my color lasts better and this was recommended to me by my hairdresser april so i'm gonna repurchase these these are completely empty and i think it was 20 pounds like for both of them which is pretty good and there's one liter in each so they last a long time for my skincare i just chose the products that do not change at all the first one being my super drug hot cloth cleanser it's from the naturally radiant line and whenever i see these i like stock up on two they're just so good i just rub it onto my face after i've taken off my makeup and i remove it with a hot cloth a flannel <laughs> muslin cloth and the ingredients, there's cocoa butter, sugar beet extract, lotus extract, sweet almond oil, kiwi, lemon, bilberry, sugar maple, vitamin E, mulberry, sugar beet, did I say that? But yeah, it's, it's just full of really, really, really good stuff and it's been working for me for years. This moisturiser is the Kiehl's Ultra Facial Cream and again, it just works for me whether I'm dry, whether I'm more oily, whether I've I'm breaking out. I just always go back to it. This is my second little tub. I need to get the big tub. It's just a bit pricey, so it always feels less painful getting the smaller tub, but I know it's not as cost efficient. But I really, really love this. You can see this one is nearly empty. And lastly, I really love the La Roche Posay Serres Inc. I again have been using this for years and years and years, and I use it after I've done everything. I just douse myself in this and like fan myself off and let it dry i don't rub it off i don't do anything and it just makes a noticeable difference i feel it rebalances my skin and really helps if i'm breaking out like not even if i'm just getting a big spot but you know when your skin's just a bit textured and a bit like you get those smaller bumpy spots this just really evens out my skin and I really, really enjoy it. And it's quite affordable. This was £8.50. And yeah, these are the products that do not change. I tend to change up my serums. You know, I've used a lot from The Ordinary, but I switch them in and out a lot. These are like my staple products that I will 100% repurchase. And I also love the Aquaphor Soothing Skin Balm. It's just basically a lip balm, but you can use it on your cuticles, dry areas, 
wherever and it's just sort of clear and it's so good one it's a big tube and i think it costs about nine pounds and i've had it must be close to over a year now and i'm nowhere near to running out and also because it's so big i don't lose it as much or as often i can just you know spot it wherever it's not like really tiny where i can misplace it and it's not like oh, and it's not like vaseline where it doesn't really do much for your lips it really hydrates them and i can if i apply a thick layer before i go to bed the next day i can still feel like the remnants of it on my lips which i really really like i found it so hard to narrow down my favorite foundation so i do have quite a few but they're all at different price ranges and different finishes different purposes so personally i'm not hugely into primers I don't always think they're hugely necessary for my skin type, but one that I do love is the Dr. Hauschka Translucent Bronzing Tint, and it does what it says on the tin. It's just a tint to your skin, and it makes it look more bronzed, you know? It's really lovely at giving your color, face more color, but it doesn't add any luminosity in the sense that your skin's not, like, tacky or shimmery and it's not mattifying, it's honestly just like someone put a tint over your face, it doesn't change the texture of your skin at all, which I like, so it's not gonna interfere with your foundation. You can also mix this in with your foundation and it gives such a lovely finish, and it's really good if you wanna use a sheer foundation, and you know if your um, chest is a bit more tanned, you can apply this first, so you don't have to apply a heavy foundation to match your colors. You can just use a sheer tint because you've already got this underneath starting with the lightest coverage you guys will know this if you've been watching me for a while this is the laura mercier illuminating tinted moisturizer in golden radiance this is definitely my summer shade but in summer it looks so good i need to get a lighter one for winter but it is the most illuminating tinted moisturizer ever it provides the probably the same amount of coverage as mac face and body but it's more glowy it's more illuminating and i love this as a base and buffing over foundations on top of it and i love it on its own especially in summer and i can tell this on holiday when i do go on holiday in summer is gonna be like the goat like i just know i'm gonna use it so much and i'm so glad i picked this up and i will repurchase it again and again next we have two foundations quite similar in coverage we have the Ordinary Serum Foundation in 2.1Y and MAC Face and Body Foundation in C5. Again, about the same coverage as the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturiser, but less illuminating and a bit thinner in texture. So I really do like these both. They do have slightly different textures. I find possibly MAC Face and Body lasts a bit longer on me. I know some people have some problems with the serum foundation not wearing so well, but for everyday use, I'm not always too bothered about my foundation wearing away a bit. It's not one of my main concerns, but I do love these foundations for everyday. If I had to pick out of the two, it would be MAC Face and Body. Um, just because I love even using this with my hands, it works amazingly, using it with a brush. But I know MAC's quite expensive and the ordinary is a great alternative for it and i do love this also now my all-time favorite foundation is the ex1 invisiwear foundation and this is in the shade 10 which is my more summery shade now i should be using eight but i think i've lost it it's more of a medium coverage you could maybe push it to a full if you built it up but medium to full i'd say and it's a natural finish so it's not super dewy not at all like face and body however it's not matte it's just the perfect satin finish i love it and it's really good for asian and olive skin tones because all of their colors have those yellowy greeny undertones however i know their shade range is still quite limited especially for darker skin tones so that definitely needs improving however if you can find your um, right colour in it, this is an amazing, amazing, amazing foundation. Okay, my last foundation mention is the Fenty Beauty foundation, and I'm in the shade 310. Um, this is the Pro Filter foundation. I always wonder if she'll come out with a different type of foundation. 
but yeah this is a soft matte finish which is again different to the EX1 and the MAC ones this is way 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 more matte and this is actually my summer shade so I haven't been wearing it too much unless I'm I don't know fake tan or something so I think I need to pick up another shade however it's just flawless like sometimes even though I have dry skin I really do love a matte finish I look at myself like checking throughout the day and it's so it holds together so well and it's just beautiful. I really recommend this and I'm sure you've heard a ton about it, but yeah. So for my powders, I have quite a few. I'm, I'm super, super not very cutthroat and pretty indecisive when it comes to stuff like this. So I'll just get through them quite quickly. For under the eyes and as a loose setting powder, I love the Bobbi Brown Pale Yellow. It works well on my skin tone and if you're darker, they have darker options. And if you're fairer, they have fair options as well but I use pale yellow and I just love pressing this in with a beauty blender and yeah it's beautiful then as an all over face powder I love the NYX no filter powder very similar to the Sephora micro smooth finishing powder you know that one which Alyssa Ashley uses and also even more similar to max mineralized skin finished so it's that kind of baked soft almost sheeny powder but it's not shimmery do you know what i mean it's just that natural skin like finish and i love this just to take away any tackiness um, from my foundation this is in the shade golden and it looks quite dark so yeah again summer shade and i can use as a bronzer and i do want to pick up a properly darker one to use as bronzer because the finish of this powder is stunning. MAC Studio Fix powder in C40 is an amazing full coverage powder foundation. So whenever I've applied my foundation, set it, and sometimes I look at it and I can still see maybe scarring, redness, any blemishes, I take my beauty blender and I just pounce over my skin with this to give me a bit more added coverage. And again, I think I'd repurchase it if it ran out and yeah, I love this. Even on a night out where I'd want a full coverage all over base, I would set my whole face with this, definitely. For my dried skin babes that don't like a lot of powder, Wilder by Glossier is just amazing. It's, it's the like least powdery powder I've ever found. I love the packaging as well. You get like a sifter so it doesn't go everywhere even though it's loose. Um, although I don't love the shade range. This is in the shade uh, Dark Deep, which is the medium shade, I've, I believe. I think they've got one darker than this and one lighter than this. And at the moment, this is too dark for me. So there needs to be one in between light and this, personally. But in the summer, it's just stunning. Stunning. If you don't like a heavy powder, this all over just to take away that tackiness just to take away a tiny bit of shine is foolproof and my last powder which i have used a ton is the charlotte tilbury airbrush flawless finish powder and this is the ultimate like touch up powder and under eye powder it's unbelievably smooth and never goes cakey like you can't apply too much of this product Again, shade range is not good enough. This is medium, there's one darker and there's one lighter. There needs to be a few more. Although this does claim to be kind of like a translucent-y, tinty powder. So multiple skin tones are said to fit in each color option, but I still would prefer, you know, more colors. My two favorite bronzing and contour products are Topshop Bronzer in Mohawk. The packaging looks nothing like this and they also have a slightly dark shade called sandstorm or something i can't actually remember and i and i do want to try that one but as you can see this is super well loved it's really 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 similar to benefits hula maybe not as cool toned but i actually prefer this i always reach for it it's good to bronze and contour if I could only have one type of bronzer, it would definitely be one like this where I can use it for two things rather than a super warm bronzer where, you know, I can't contour my nose with it or, you know, contour my face with it. But yeah, I love this. Absolutely love it. 
And then for that super, super warm bronzer, it's Makeup Forever Pro Bronze Fusion in 35i. I already have a backup that I found at TK Maxx. I couldn't resist not picking up a backup. Um, but yeah, the formula of this is honestly what makes it, maybe not so much the colour, but the formula is like a hard powder. When you dust your brush in it and tap it off, there's no powder coming off, not even if you swirled forever. However, when you dust the brush on your face, a lot of pigment will come off. It's just beautiful. It doesn't look like anything on the skin. It doesn't look like a layer of like dusty powder or dry powder on your skin. It's my favorite. My favorite blush product of the year has to be Glossier's Cloud Paint. This is in the shade uh, Haze. It's the darkest shade and it's stunning. I've never, ever, ever found such a blendable creamy blush. I know cream blush can be so scary. Is it gonna be greasy? Is it gonna be unblendable? Is it gonna take away my foundation underneath? And this successfully jumps over all of those hurdles. It's super blendable, you only need a tiny bit, but even if you did take too much, it's so blendable that it's never like stuck there on your cheek. And I also have the shade Beam, which is really beautiful, and to be honest, I'd happily have all of the cloud paints from Glossier. They're stunning. The powder blush, I have really loved ASOS blush in Unbothered. The formula is amazing, it's like not super powdery where you tap your brush and there's loads of um, kickback on the cheeks, it melts into the skin. And to be honest, the shade of this blush is unreal. It's like the perfect peach with a hint of pink in it. Oh, it's just stunning, like look at that. Imagine that on tanned skin, like when I've, after I've been on holiday. For a shimmery blush, I have loved Telling Glow by MAC. This is like the most glowy blush I've ever, ever seen. It's like NARS Orgasm on steroids. It's insane. It's that orangey, burnt orangey pink with gold shimmer in it. And okay, I take that back. This with a tan is gonna be unreal. I'm going on a summer holiday in August and looking back at these products that I've loved throughout the year, I can't wait to take them on holiday with me. And this is definitely gonna be one of those products, for sure. For concealer, I'm just gonna get this out of the way. Tarte Shape Tape in medium, game changer. And you know, you've heard enough about it on YouTube, so that's all I'm gonna say about this. I will repurchase it for a long time and I really wanna get a few more shades in it. I wanna get one slightly darker, actually. But yeah, I really, really, really love this. The next concealer I want to mention is Urban Decay's Naked Skin Concealer in medium neutral. I love this because it's not so bright as the medium in the Tarte Shape Tape and it's also more neutral and it's it does have really really good coverage but it's not as full coverage as that so if I'm wearing like a lighter base and put sh Tarte sh Shape Tape on it ooh, oh. <laughs> if I put Tarte Shape Tape on I have to work quite hard to blend it in and not look like full coverage under the eyes and natural around the rest of my face. I would use this instead because it's more blendable and I'm wearing it now actually um, and I do find it more versatile like I can wear it on a more natural day and I can wear it on a heavy full beat kind of day. It's beautiful. I can't pick between the two. I couldn't pick between the two. No, I couldn't. And a more affordable concealer that is foolproof is the LA Girl Pro Conceal. I have about seven shades in this, one for contouring, two for my actual face, two for under my eyes, and two for an eyeshadow base. I really, really love it. Super affordable. Coverage is medium to full. Shade range is bomb, comes in correctors, all sorts. And yeah, if you haven't tried this, you have nothing to lose. You really don't. Highlighter. Desi and Katie, Dose of Colours, Fuego and Mirame. Absolutely stunning. This is Fuego, this is Mirame. And if I had to choose one, I think, you know, it might be Mirame. This with a tan, this on deeper skin tones, is something more unique, I feel like. 
Fuego is a beautiful gold highlight, however, I can find another gold highlight, I guess, but Mirame is, is irreplaceable to me. It's stunning, and I found myself in summer reaching for this more, actually. But then again, I do like Fuego for my nose or my inner corners. Oh, that doesn't look great, does it? Um, for my inner corners, where I want something a bit more brighter and I want it to pop a little bit more. They're very similar to like Max Oh Darling Texture and Laura Geller Gilded Honey. You know that sort of like hard texture, but this these ones are a bit softer than that. Do you know what I mean? I love them. For eyebrows, I have really been loving the NYX Micro Brow Pencil and I'm in the shade black. I never really want to faff around too much with my brows and this just does the job, you know, spoolie on one end, really precise pencil on the other. I don't know, I just think it's so affordable as well. I would never think of paying 20 quid for a brow product anymore because I have this. I don't know which category this should go in. I actually have two but I can't find the other one and it's the Bourjois Brow Pens in medium and light and this is what I use for my faux freckles. Absolutely best product I have ever 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 found over powders, pencils, gels, anything, liquid lipsticks, anything for the most natural looking faux freckles ever. I think I think these might be discontinued now. I can never find them on ASOS where I bought them from or actually at a bourgeois stand. However, any eyebrow pens would work because it's not really about the brand or the color. It's about the formula. The formula of a brow pen is sheer and tinted, just like a freckle would be. Freckles aren't really like bold colours, they're kind of translucent -y, and these just achieve that perfectly. So a blonde and a medium brown shade and you're sorted. For eyeshadow palettes, I'm more picking out brands in general and I'm showing you probably my favourite palette from that brand. The first one is the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. Oh, this is a really stunning palette whether you like Jaclyn Hill or not. The quality is, you know, on a different level to the other Morphe palettes. Saying that, I know this is quite expensive compared to the other Morphe palettes. I do love the 35C as well for bright colours and the 35O. They're both amazing as well if you don't want to buy this one. If you wanted to create a, a wide variation of looks, this is a great palette. You can create so many looks with this. I actually used it on my eyes today. The next is the Juvia's Place Saharan palette, but I also have the Magic palette and the Masquerade palette, and they are amazing, like beautiful, bright colours, amazing colour combinations. I, like, I probably prefer Juvia's Place over the Morphe palettes. I just think I would rather have better quality bright eyeshadows which are slightly smaller and a little bit more expensive. These are amazing. This palette in particular is perfect for the the person who likes a bit of colour but not too much colour. I could still use this as an everyday palette. If you get rid of this one and this one, how do I do that? I can't really. You know, it's not too bright at all. I really do love it. Juvia's place as a brand in 2017 was killing it. And my last eyeshadow favourite is the Huda Beauty Desert Dusk Palette. Now I know I've only used this once on camera but in everyday life I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. It's that typical warm tone palette however it does have a few pops of colour especially with these um duochrome ones and with the pressed glitter. A red pressed glitter is me in glitter form. The mattes are beautifully blendable, like I've never had any issues with the blendability of these and I highly recommend them. Saying that, I also absolutely love these palettes, these are the mauve and the warm obsessions palettes and I'll be travelling with these 100%. They are tiny enough to fit in the palm of my hand, however the shade ranges in them are beautiful like I could create a day look with these shades and I could make the most intense smoky eye do you know what I mean and I think Huda Beauty makes 
the best shimmery shadows I have ever, ever, ever used in my life. But for the kind of glam makeup lover who likes a little bit of colour, Huda Beauty is where you need to go for your eyeshadows. If you want more variation, maybe you want one colourful palette, Juvia's Place. My favourite pencil eyeliner is the Barry M Waterproof Black Liner. It's super affordable, super creamy, stays put really well, and yeah, you know, cheap and cheerful, does the job. What more can you ask for? For liquid liner, I absolutely love the NYX Matte Black Liquid Liner. It sort of replaced the NYC Liquid Liner, which was holy grail status. These sideburns are playing me. However, you can no longer get that in the UK, which is really unfortunate. However, this is very similar. It dries so matte, so black, and it stays put throughout the day. For a pen liner, I love the Kat Von D Trooper liner. So if I was doing graphic liner or just wanted to really sharpen up my wing, this is what I'd go for. The only thing about the Trooper liner is that it dries to a, a little bit more of a shiny finish, which I don't mind, but I would prefer it probably if it dried to a matte finish. Um, but the precision of this pen how long it's lasted me is like no other felt tip pen that I've tried before. Yeah. Also, you should store it um, tip downwards so that the product stays saturated at the tip and not like this or not like this. Or that's how I found keeping it long lasting, lasting the longest. For mascara, pause this video and guess what it's gonna be. Have you paused it? Yeah, I've paused it. Okay. Well, it is the Maybelline <laughs> Waterproof Lash Sensational Mascara. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the Maybelline Waterproof Lash Sensational Mascara and the Shiseido Eyelash Colours. Absolute dream pairing. Like, once you buy an eyelash curler, it will last you years until you either lose it or you don't have any more of the rubber refills. Like, it's amazing. I don't know how many years I've used this for, but I will never, ever, ever, ever turn back. I don't think. I really want to try the Too Faced Better Than Sex waterproof mascara though. Before I move on to lips, which is the last, I do want to mention the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. This is the best long lasting setting spray I have ever used. I only really use it for nights out or events or yeah that's it really it is one of those products that you will notice a difference if you look in the mirror in the bathroom club you're like oh it actually has worked like my makeup does look really similar to how it did four hours ago the way i use this is before i've done my foundation i spray a few spritzes on it and while that's still wet i will then apply my foundation sometimes i'll then apply it again on top of my foundation finish my makeup and again as it's as how it's meant to be used um, set my face with it as the final touch and oh, I've got a fluff on me and it's absolutely unreal I wouldn't really use it every day simply because I don't need it I don't want to be wasting it just to be going to uni for a couple of hours or you know into Oxford Street for a few hours I don't I don't really need that okay so for lip liners my all-time holy grail nude lip liner is Cappuccino by Rimmel. The reason why I love this is it works for any nude lip. A really pale nude lip, this is perfect for like shading in the edges like in my last video. It's also perfect for a darker nude, anything. It's amazing. If you've like ever tried MAC's strip down liner, which is a lot of people's holy ground nude, and have found that it's too light for you, I think you'd really like that because I found the same. I have stripped down, but I don't really use it because I don't think it gives me enough definition. Um, and it's not too warm as well. It's not like a chocolate brown liner. It's just absolutely perfect. Next, for bright lips, I really love the uh, Kat Von D lip liners. This one is in the shade Vampira, and they come in loads of different colour options, everything under the rainbow, everything you would want, and yeah. For a bright lip, Anastasia Beverly Hills Strawberry. It's the most interesting, different, nice red. I can't, I can't really describe what red it is other than the name Strawberry 
is like the perfect name for it. Like it's a strawberry red. You know what I mean? When I first saw pictures of this and that it was releasing, I had to order it from their website like straight away because I knew I had to have it and I love it. For nudes, I love um, NYX London. It's what I'm wearing now. It goes with every look I do. I'm also wearing Rimmel Cappuccino with it. It's really comfortable. It's not like overly pigmented where I get like a horrible line in my mouth where my natural lip colour is and where the lipstick is beautiful. If I could only wear one nude it would be this. For a slightly pinkier nude I really love MAC's Burnt Spice um, Retro Matte Lip Colour. I used to wear this tons and I always get questions on what I'm wearing when I wear this. It's beautiful. I love the formula and yeah I highly highly recommend this colour. And my favourite gloss of 2017, can you guess what it is? The Fenty Gloss Balm. I don't think I'll ever need another gloss in my life. It works beautifully if I've got nothing on my lips. If I've got a nude lip on, it will work with that. I'm pretty sure if I had a bright lip on and I wanted to make a glossy, this would work. It has a tint, yet it's so sheer and it's so universal and Rihanna did an amazing job with this product. I feel like everyone would love this, you know what I mean? Whew. And that is it. Thank you so much if you managed to watch all through that nonsense i know that's probably been a very 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 long video but i hope you guys enjoyed sort of a roundup of my 2017 favorites this year or the last year has been absolutely amazing and i would love to do more chatty videos with you guys where i'm talking more deep into things but i know of course we're all here for makeup so maybe if you guys would like i could do another video talking about my music favorites my book favorites my you know lifestyle favorites as i mentioned earlier but yeah thank you so much for watching everything will be listed down below including what i am wearing right now and i think that's everything thank you so so much for watching lots of love and positive vibes your way bye <laughs>